So what's it like to prepare for three different fighters in the span of a week or so? Um, it's pretty interesting, you know, uh, for the most part, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to do what I do, I'm going to go out there and be Violent Bob Ross like always. But it is, it's been interesting kind of retooling the game plan going from a 5'9 wrestler to a, a six foot kind of brawler style kind of guy. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to a guy that I'm pretty sure is going to want to go out there and bang it out with me. Looking forward to a good fight with, for the fans. Um, the one thing I'm most interested about though with my opponent is uh, knowing that he's fought most of his career at 35 and 45. Being six foot, he's towered over just about every single one of his opponents. So I'm wondering, I'm, I'm interested to see how he's going to deal with being the smaller man. You know, having a three inch uh, reach disadvantage and a three inch height disadvantage. Not only that, I'm more than likely going to come into the cage a good ten pounds heavier than him. Was there a point, uh, you know, with all these opponent changes, he thought, oh man, maybe this one's going to fall through? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, I kind of wish my managers had just told me that the the fight was that my opponent was out when they got me the final one because uh when they when they announced that alex was out kind of, i'm not gonna lie i got i got a little down you know I, I didn't know if i was gonna have a fight and then uh i had to get on the plane before um i even knew i was, I was gonna have an opponent i didn't even know i was gonna like i didn't know i would have an opponent until i landed here in norfolk so it was uh, it was kind of nerve wracking, but at the same time, it is what it is. You know, this is the nature of the fight business. Just, you know, outside of that, it's also been a hell of a week personally, right? You know, going around with your what, biological father. Yeah, man, it's it's been an interesting week. Um, so Tuesday, I, uh, I well, I got in Monday and I got to have dinner with my dad, and then Tuesday we went out and I met my biological little brother for the first time. That was uh, it was really interesting, you know. We're both very similar, especially around new people. Very quiet, very hard to open up. And I can tell with the way my dad is a little bit more overbearing than uh, with with my little brother than with me. You know, with him sitting there, he didn't want to open up and tell me like what's real, like really about himself. So I think um, it's just going to take some time, as you know, one on one to really be able to foster that relationship. Yeah, what? How did you guys reconnect or connect? Um, so I connected with my father through Ancestry DNA. It was actually uh, like really random. I was driving out to California and uh, I just got an email from Ancestry DNA and they said, uh, it said you have a new uh, DNA match. And I'm going through it and I'm looking and there's one part where they tell you like the potential relationship and it said parent-child. And that's why I, I remember I dropped my phone. I didn't know what to do. So. Uh, dude messages me and we, we ask each other a couple questions back and forth and I remember when he asked me he was like hey is your birthday early July my birthday is July 5th and that's when I knew I was like oh this guy's my dad <laughs> but then uh, what's crazy too is at the time I was moving from St. Louis to California and um, we ended up meeting uh, in St. Louis because his dad or his mother's lived in St. Louis her entire life so I little did I know like maybe 10 minutes away from where I was living at the time, my grandmother was like right up the road. It's crazy. What's it like for him during a brief conversation of you know, a son who's a UFC fighter? So that was actually really funny. Um, we're, you know, obviously yeah, I didn't really mention that the first time we talked. Right. And so through the subsequent uh, conversations, I remember one time he just like randomly called me. He was the first thing that comes out of his mouth, he was like, hey, um, you wouldn't happen to be this like UFC fighter with the red afro, would you? And I was like, oh man, did you Google my name? And he was like, I had to. And then, uh, so he was like, oh, that's what's up. And then he called me back later because apparently he asked a couple of his his uh, um, his uh, buddies and coworkers and everything, um, you know, if they knew about me. And like they were like, oh, dude. You know Violent Bob Ross? He's like one of the, he's, he's cool as hell or whatever. And so like, after that he called me and was like, yo, so you're actually pretty legit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not bad, you know, pretty decent. I do what I do. What would you like to teach your biological brother about the fight game? It's not something you want to get into. <laughs> um, nah, I mean, when it comes down to it, uh, if there was anything I'd want to teach him, and this kind of goes to my uh, other little siblings as well, um, 
it's not even anything about the fight game. It's just what the fight game's taught me. You know, it's perseverance. Uh, hard work and dedication will get you as far as you want in life. And the human will is a lot stronger than what you think. You just got to persevere through all this hard stuff. Eventually, you will make it. Eventually, you will find success. Another thing, um, the Ultimate Fighter is inevitably done. Um, do you feel like you would be in this position without the Ultimate Fighter? No, without a doubt, I would not be in this position without the Ultimate Fighter. I think uh, Tough was the absolute perfect platform for me to break into the uh, the bigger picture of MMA and into the UFC, just based on my personality, based on the way I fight, based on you know, it's a lot of um, intangible factors that I bring to the table. I knew, and a lot of my family and friends knew that. Once I got on tough and those cameras got on me and people saw me in a reality TV situation, I was going to be a star. What, what did you take away? I mean, obviously, I know you felt you won the last fight against Farrell, but what can you do this time around to make sure it's, you know, it doesn't even come down to that situation where it's decided by the judges there? Um, without a doubt, I've been working on that little bolo knee because I caught him with the thigh, so I'm like, now... I'm telling you, if I touch you with that one, it's it's done. You're not getting you're not getting up from that. But at the same time, I also um, I also I mean I can't lie. I kind of took my, uh, my foot off the pedal a little bit in the third. So I, I trained a lot more extensively to uh, to be able to go super hard all three rounds, and then not to uh, not only that, but I, I'm there's no more thinking I won. You know, we're going out there. We're going. We're looking to finish every second of every round. And I know you said, I think it was in like a UFC quote or something, but you said something really clicked this camp and you were feeling about like 2009 Anderson Silva or something. Oh like yeah, Can man. You just tell us a little bit about that? So uh, I switched camps from AKA to American Top Team. Um, huh. Not a, not, you know, because of anything bad at AKA, it was just financially, you know, living in Silicon Valley is very, very expensive. And, um, you know, talking with my managers, about what to do uh, to to kind of mitigate that, um, they had brought up the uh, the possibility of moving to Florida, and then I talked to uh, my coaches at AKA about it and I told them the situation, and they gave me their blessing to to kind of do what I had to do. So now I'm at American Top Team, and it's it's been a lot easier for me. I don't have to focus on pretty much anything other than showing up and training, but. Um, no, something really clicked. I don't know if it was the the like the actual environment of California compared to Florida, the the weather or something. But ever since I've gotten to Florida, I, there's just been something different. I, I feel ten times better when I train. I, I actually I feel super super motivated to get up every day, cook breakfast, go through all the supplements and everything. And I remember there was one specific sparring uh, session I had. I was actually, it was funny too, because I, I couldn't even focus on the sparring session. I was going through it a little bit with my girlfriend. And uh, the whole time, all I could think about was like the issues we had. But I don't know, like I, I was go like, I, I don't know why. I was just, I wasn't focused at all, but I was in there, couldn't, couldn't get touched by a very, very highly touted uh, UFC veteran. Wasn't being touched, and then like to the point where like my coach is sitting there, King Mo, sitting there on the, on the outside, stop coaching me and just becoming a fan, you know, watching me go. So it was, it was after that, I, I took that performance and I, I, was, I said, I told myself, we're gonna do everything we can to recreate this going forward and uh, make sure we can get, get something going like this on fight night. Cause I feel like after seeing what I can truly do uh, this camp, I know it's just a matter of time. Is it, I mean, that transition to move gyms like that, uh, do you feel like it takes a little bit of an adjustment period, or do you think you sold, I mean, you kind of sat there, but you think you sold in so well that you're going to be able to have you know, your peak performance? I mean, yeah, there was an adjustment period, but uh, a lot of people don't know, I trained at ATT uh, for three months getting ready for my professional debut, so it's like I, I knew a lot of the guys uh, in there, and uh, a lot of people remembered me. But I, I was all, I'm also like I was real close to King Mo beforehand, so there wasn't really much of a, an adjustment period. So much as like um, me just getting used to the way they do things and being a part of their team. Um, they're a lot they're they're a lot more hands on with the way they uh, they kind of control the fighters' schedules and everything like that. And it 
it took me a little while to get used to that because you know at AKA it's pretty much you know it's on you to the honest is on you to get all that figured out. But I can't lie, I do I really appreciate everything uh, the coaches at ATT do to help us out and take care of us pretty much twenty four seven. Who's gonna be in your corner? Um, Gabriel De Oliveira, King Mo, my best friend Cortavius. He's so, actually the one with the mic this time. Yeah. I'm uh, sure it was frustrating going through so many opponents uh, leading up to this week. If um, if they were guaranteed to show up, and um, what would you be your dream fight? Ooh, dream fight. I, me and my, I've, been, I've been asked this question quite a bit. Um, I don't know if he'll ever get back to 55, but Nate Diaz. No. I mean, me, I feel like me and him just put together uh, everything about the both of us become would be a great fight. I feel bad. I just asked you a question you've been asked a million times. Um, if you could have one of these two things, one year all expenses paid in Europe or 10 minutes on the moon, what would you rather have? All expenses paid in Europe, most definitely. How come? Um, I mean, what are you going to do for 10 minutes on the moon? Just look at it. Fair uh, enough. Versus like being able to go see where I was born and like just getting to travel all, all across Europe would be really cool. Is there any kind of strength that you take from actually taking, you know, we we're talking about all these short notice kind of changes, but we've seen fighters like Angela Hill and Donald Cerrone do really well on short notice fights and short notice changes. Is there a bit of freedom that does get you back in that Anderson Silva-like mode where you can just kind of autopilot and not have to worry about all the tape that you watched or whatever it might have been? Uh, 100%, you know, um, I, I don't watch a lot of tape in general when I, uh, when I'm preparing for fights, um, and I, I barely watch tape on Alex going into this, I just, I like to see, you know, how they do things and the way they set things up, you know, how technical, how, how truly technical is a guy, um, but, I don't know, I just, I feel confidence, you know, because I feel like, when you take a short notice fight like this, and I'm not taking anything away from Steven, he's a great competitor, uh, and I feel like it's going to be a great fight, but I feel like when you take a short notice fight like this, in the back of your mind a little bit, there's got to be that that feeling like, if I lose, I know it's okay, because I, I took the short notice fight and I still got fights down the road, so I, I a part of me wonders if that's going to be a factor at all, you know, but um, at the same time, like I said, I'm going out there. I'm gonna be violent, Bob Ross, just like it is, just like I always am. Paint the canvas red, throw them little happy knees, like everybody likes. Hopefully, put this man away in the first. Good. Thanks, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. No problem, guys. Y'all great.